Hello guys, my name is Karina Garcia and today I'm going to be talking about this amazing book that you need to read, you actually need to read, and it's called Enrique's Journey by Sonia Nazario, okay? My first question for you guys is to think about what would you do if you have to travel by yourself more than 2,000 miles, up to 12,000 miles to find your mother? at 17 years old, okay? Think about, think about what would you do if you have to travel 2,000 miles to find your mother, okay? Let's think about that question. The second question I want you, I want you to think is, um, what are you willing to do for your family? What are, you do, what are you doing right now for your family, okay? And let's start like learning about a little bit more about Enrique's journey, okay? So Enrique's journey, it's a story that gives us like a great perspective about the young immigrant immigrants who cross the border every day to have a better life, okay? So keeping that in mind, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of this. Um, Enrique, right, he was five years old he is from Honduras and his mom left him in order to go to the United States to find a better, a better life. Okay. So this is Enrique. This is a real story, guys. This is a real, a real, you know, experience and kind of like a biography about this, this journey that Enrique made. So Enrique having five, um, being, I'm sorry, five years old, his mom left him in order to find better life in Los Angeles and it was really hard for her but like in Honduras people are really poor they have a, a high 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 percentage on crime and violence and it was just the only uh, you know option that she had in order to feed Enrique and his sister Belki okay so knowing this uh, Enrique feels isolated he feels depressed he feels really sad that mom left him. He was really confused, always waiting. When is she coming back? You know, when is she going to go back? And uh, by this time, he was staying with his father. And then the father left them, well, left him to, to be with another woman. And then he stayed with his tío, his uncle, I'm sorry, Marcos. And then uh, his Marcos, oh my God, what am I saying? His, his uncle dies in a shooting because, you know, the violence over there is crazy. And then for him, losing his uncle was really hard because he was like his mentor, his guide in Honduras. And then he he stays with his um his dad's mother, uh, Abuela Maria, his grandma Maria, and then he stays there, right? And Belki, his sister, was staying uh, with the other tia, Ma, uh, Ines, with uh, his mom's, his mom's um, mother side on the family, right? So while all these things happen, um, Enrique being all confused and really young, he he ended up doing drugs, right? He ended up doing drugs, being involved in violence with La Mara Salvatrucha. As a lot of you know, La Mara Salvatrucha is one of the highest uh, crazy gangs in South America, really violent, and they do a lot of crimes and kill people every day, okay? Um, of course, he, he was involved in, in fights, in drugs, in the neighborhood, and he just thought, you know what, if I don't leave, I'm going to end up dead, like these people every day. So um, he just took the decision to leave, and during that time, he met a girl called Maria Isabel. He fell in love with Maria Isabel, and she was in, in love too, but Maria Isabel's family didn't like him because... He didn't have money and he was involved in drugs as well, right? So he thought, you know what? I'm, I'm lonely here. I need to find my mother. So he ends up traveling to find his mother. And then what did he, what route did he take? Basically, he took the first route, route that you can see here. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so here, this is Honduras. He ends up traveling all the way here on different trains right, to get all the way to Texas, in Laredo, Texas, which was Nuevo Laredo. Okay, so what happened during that journey? Uh, during that journey, 
he was trying to get into the U.S. Uh, at least for eight times. And every time that he wanted to come to the U.S., he experienced a lot of pain. He didn't have uh, food to eat. He didn't have water to eat for days. He was, um, he met violent police and border patrols who were literally like really corrupted in Chiapas and um, Oaxaca or Veracruz and in Ovalaredo. He experienced really bad things with the police. As we know, Mexico has a really bad uh, police system. So he was just really like affected by, by this country as well, which was my country. Um, so as we know, he traveled on La Bestia. La Bestia is this train that takes people from all the way from Honduras to literally like you saw the three routes to um, the, the other way can be Chihuahua, which is a state in the middle. Uh, Tamaulipas and Ovalaredo and all the way to Tijuana which is uh, in California or Baja California in the north on the northwest of Mexico so these people stay there they don't eat for days they don't drink water for days if they fall asleep they die because they can literally like fall from the train right so as we as we see Enrique experienced like hard times traveling by himself without no money other than hundred dollars that Belki gave him and some of the other money that he had saved for years. Um, by this point, you know, this is another picture that we can experience how they travel and it's really dangerous for them to be here. So finally, he stayed in Ovalaredo. By this time, mom moved from Los Angeles to North Carolina and she had a baby called Diana. And, um, you know, since this is a nonfiction book, uh, it's really realistic, you know? So all the stories that he was saying about being him in Ovalaredo, he was refugee in, in a church called San Jose, and he experienced how, like, you know, um, smugglers cross people, los coyotes were crossing people every day. So he ends up meeting one guy called El Tirinado, and he's just, like, all in to find his mom in North Carolina. So he ends up crossing with El Tirinado, after being involved in drugs in Nuevo Laredo, this is Laredo in Nuevo Laredo, Laredo, Texas, and that's El Rio Grande or Rio Bravo. So he crosses the border. Uh, he ends up crossing, and he 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 when he crosses, he's on El Zacate Creek in Laredo, Texas. I live in Laredo, Texas, so for me, this book I wasn't expecting all these details. For me, it was shocking because you know I felt it like you know a little bit more mine due to the locations. Um, so he crosses after being super dirty, he ends up going to, to Dallas, he finds new clothes, the smugglers gave, gave him clothes and new shoes, everything he eats in a restaurant. From Dallas, he goes to Houston, and then from Houston, he goes to Orlando, Florida, right? In Orlando, Florida, um, in Orlando, Fro Florida, I'm sorry, uh, Lourdes, which was uh, the mom who left him when she was 24 years old, He's living in a trailer with a lot of people. So he, he by, by this time, Enrique um, lost his hair phone number, I'm sorry, because of the, of the travesty on, on, the, on La Bestia, on the train. But he, he contacted a friend to call other friend in Honduras in order to get the phone number. So they contact, they finally got into communication and uh, Lourdes' boyfriend, went to pick him up in Orlando, Florida. And then at the end, no, not at the end, like almost at the end, they meet again after 11, year, 11 years without being together. Uh, Enrique met her, I mean, his little sister, Diana. And, and you know, it was really emotional, that scene for me, when I pictured it in my mind, because they met and it was the first time, right? And after that, uh, he started like working as a painter. By this time, Maria Isabel, was pregnant and he didn't know when he came to the country. A lot of people, a lot of family from Enrique thought, oh, she's she's expecting a child that is not yours. But for Maria, Maria, Isabel, and Enrique's love was not an issue, you know? So after time, he ends up finding a way to bring Maria Isabel to the US with a smuggler. And then um, and then the little uh, the daughter that they had right? They had a daughter called Catherine Jasmine. She stays in Honduras for like three years. And uh, we need to keep in mind, guys, 
is happening early 2000, you know? So all these events happen from 2000, 2003, you know, and, and they just put into perspective, they didn't have technology to communicate from a third world country in the US, it was just really hard. So when Maria crosses, you know, Enrique starts thinking like, I'm repeating the story, I'm repeating the pattern that my mom did with me. And he thought, you know, Jasmine is gonna grow up with the same traumas, right? By this time, Enrique was having a lot of issues with uh, his mom, Lourdes, because when she left him, she was 24 and he was barely five years old. And he says that he didn't grow up with love because his dad left and things like this. So as we see this like uh, dysfunctional family, he had a lot of traumas and emotional issues and ang angry, uh, you know, rage towards Lourdes. So he's like, I don't want that for Jasmine and I need to find a way. However, he starts involving into drugs again in the U.S. He and he gets to jail. He goes to jail three times, according to the book. So just think about it. He was a, a, an undocumented person and he goes three times to jail and without being legal. That's really risky. H however, like in the early 2000s, uh, immigration law, though the laws weren't as hard right now, right now it's totally a different story, you know? Um, they don't have mercy on you anymore. Okay, so uh, at the end, they cross Jasmine, and then when Jasmine is 13 years old, she witnessed a crime, and then she goes and testifies to court and, th and thinks that that testification they got a visa for uh, Enrique, Maria Isabel, and, and herself. Uh, over time, Don Francisco, a show, a Latino show, invites Lourdes uh, to go to a program, and then she re re reunites with Belki, the sister who was in Honduras. And then they get a permit for Belki for a week to stay in the U.S., and then she went back to Honduras to see her son. So overall, guys, um, when... Enrique is in the jail. Maria Isabel gets pregnant, and then they had another boy called Daniel. So at the end, Enrique, Enrique after crossing the border and everything, he had a family, right? He had Catherine, Jasmine, Maria Isabel, and Daniel, and the four of them were together, right? And Daniel was born here, so he had papers, or well, he was a U.S. citizen. So at the end, guys, this story is just like a story of love, a story of determination and how people, young people, uh, are willing to risk their lives just to have a better future without thinking about the consequences. So thinking as a teacher, as a high school teacher, I thought this is a great activity for either English, history, or Spanish. And since I teach AP and IV Spanish, for me, I thought that I can involve this um, story into my unit for my 12th graders called Immigration, La Inmigración. So I thought reading the book and I found it in Spanish and it's called La Travesía de Enrique. And uh, my plan would be, I'm thinking like literally doing it next year to incorporate it in the beginning of the year, right? Try to make a copy for each one or find a copy. And then every every week uh, I'll give informative assessments and I will ask them for a summary of chapter, chapter one because there's eight chapters of the book. So I'm going to try to divide it until we, you know, they see all uh, eight chapters. And then uh, maybe by the end of the quarter, March or something like that from the next year, they will do a research paper, right? Um, or a uh, com comparison and contrasting uh, paper, just uh, thinking about the immigration laws and all these journey that people do to have better perspective into immigration. So, so I think a, an argumentative essay would be a great idea too, in order to complete, you know, all the purposes and all the messages that this book is sending. So I would love to know the opinion for, for these, uh, for my students, I'm sorry, based on the immigration status, especially right now with the politics and election, elections during 2020. So that will be my, my final summative assessment, three uh, page essay about their opinions based on immigration after reading the book whole year and doing formative assessments every other week well guys that's it for today thank you so much for listening to my story this book is a great eye opener for even for latinos to know a little bit more about the journey and this is great thank you so much and you need to read it thank you